how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth, Nazareth. with the Holy, Holy Ghost, Ghost with power, who yes. went about doing good, good. Not, bad, not bad, good, right. and healing right. all. They dealt with the longest word in the Bible, all, healing all yes. that were oppressed of, the, of devil. the devil. That tells us God's good, Jesus is good, the Holy Ghost, Ghost is, is good, good, and the devil's bad. <laughs> the devil's the oppressor. And yeah. that, that answered a lot of questions. No, it does. They told us in church that yeah, sometimes God and the devil switch places. Yeah, the they devil did together. the good stuff and God did the yeah. bad stuff. Yeah. And that's just not true. Never. Jesus went about doing good. So all of heaven is watching the earth all the time, looking for a man or a woman that's going to use the Word of God, that's going to speak the Word of God, that's going to move on the Word of God. And when they do, heaven moves. Hello, everyone. God bless you, and thank you today so much for joining us at Terry Mize Ministries' More Than Conquerors program. We are just thrilled and honored that you've joined us, and we are looking forward to sharing with you right now some good things from the Word of God, the ever-living, incorruptible <laughs> <laughs> seeds of the Word of God. Sounds so, like Brother Osteen. Yes, yes, yes. We are th thrilled uh, to share these good things with you. I mean, Terry and I look forward to this time to be with you. It has nothing to do with, you know, uh, any kind of vanity. It has to do with the Word of God being shared in the earth, changing people's lives like it did ours. Oh, absolutely. And still is. And still is every single day. You know, the Bible talks about us going from glory to glory, from faith to faith. You know, that we learn line upon line, sure. precept upon precept. Sure. This is all a learned Here behavior. A little, a little. Yeah, nobody has a corner on the market on this. This is just whosoever will can have whatever, how much they want, you know. And uh, we just want to help encourage your hunger for the Word of God, the wisdom of God. And these are not just high, lofty platitudes, Terry. This is lifestyle. Oh, absolutely. I always think about the, the early days. Yeah. <clears throat> you know... Uh, it's not just reminiscing, but it's it's going back and, and recounting the testimonies. Yeah. Going back to where we started, where right. we were. Where we were, uh, how when, we were when, ignorant when and we young started, when you and, and Dean, immature. <laughs> when you and Dean started, when Jackie and I started, right. we're talking in the in the very early 70s. Right. Uh, and we were all in our early I 20s. Mean, extremely early 70s, yeah, even right. the late 60s. Right. Um, but... Um, the Lord had showed me some things that we would call today the Word of Faith back in 1966. Mm -hmm. And then again in 68, it was so right. revolutionary then that my church got mad at me about it. But <laughs> um, but when we first started, you know, um, Brother Hagen actually left the Assemblies of God mm -hmm. and went out into his own ministry in right. 1966. So more people were exposed to him. That's, right. that's when I got exposed to him the first time. Right. Heard him. He came to my hometown and Got a little, little, uh, rented a little room from the Ramada Inn there in town. Oh, and, my. And, you know, just a handful of people there. And I was one right. of the handful. Yeah. And uh, I just thought, oh, this is the greatest, greatest thing I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> and because he was really preaching what the Lord had been dealing with me all this time, right. but nobody could verify it. I mean, I was, right. I was like the only one. You know, I was like the Lone Ranger. And that's not a good thing to do. You want. You want, you know, the you want the, the multitude of right. <laughs> counselors. You know, you want uh, the you wisdom. Know, you want right. you want input. You don't want to be out there just the Lone Ranger. And uh, so, uh, I remember one night him saying, uh, you know, that uh, the healing ministry, right, which he had. Jesus had put his finger in his in his palm of his hand, right, and and told him to pray for people, and he'd, he'd feel that burn, and 
you know, all the rest of his days, all the rest of his life, and it, that, that would come on him, and he'd start laying hands on people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But he said and the healing ministry and the miracle ministry were so valid and so real right. and so right, and that's right. all we'd ever been exposed to. Sure. You know, we'd, we'd seen the, 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 the healing ministries of the 50s, you know, right. Roberts and Jack Cole and A.A. A. Allen right. and these great, wonderful, right. marvelous William Branham, wonderful, wonderful uh, healings. Um, and that's what all we really were exposed to, those, those of us in Pentecost. And, of course, those in other denominations weren't exposed to it at all. But, <laughs> that's right. <clears throat> but Brother Hagen said, you know, th- that's all right and that's all real and that's all good. He said, but if 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 you get sick at 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning or right. your baby gets sick at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning and, and, and the healing evangelist isn't in town, right. and you don't have their phone number and you don't have no. to get a hold of them. What are you going to do? And he said, you can go to the Word and, and right. God sent his word and right. healed them. Right. And I just sat there as a 16-year-old kid yeah. listening to him say that. And I just said, that. I said, that's exactly what God's talking to me about. Because because uh, you can't always get a hold of the healing evangelist. You can't no, always right. get a hold of Brother Big Name or they're not always in town. Or, that's right. Or, 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 you know, but you can always get a hold of God. You can always get a hold of Jesus. You can always get a hold of the word. That's right. And so I got so excited at that meeting. And just thought, man, this is this is what I've been looking for. This is what God's been talking to me about as a 16-year-old kid. I, I was the youth leader of our home church. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time in prayer. What am I going to teach these kids? And that's what God had been talking to me about, that you can get it from the Word. And we've, we've discussed it on the program before, that the first thing God gave me uh, that just revolutionized my life and yet made the church upset at me uh, was he said to me, you can talk like God. Well. Wow. And so I wrote that down. He said, write this down. So I wrote it down. And, uh, and he took me through the scriptures, Old Testament and New, right. about where men and women, heroes of faith, right. had spoken something uh, extraordinary or something right. out of the ordinary or something right. weird. Right. I mean, like Jesus talked to a tree. You know, that's weird. Jesus <laughs> talked to the to the weather. That's weird. Yes. You know, uh, Joshua talked to the sun. He said, sun, hold your place over Gibeon and thou moon over the valley of Agilon. And the Bible said it stayed day for another day. Isn't and then, that and then later the prophet spoke wow. to the sun and said, back up 10 minutes. So it backed yeah. up 10 minutes. And so so you, you see these things where uh, God told Moses to speak to the rock to get water out of it. And I wrote yes. that Moses disobeyed and hit the rock. Right. Uh, God told him actually twice. He told him once the first time he hit the rock, and he did, and the water came out. The next time they needed water again, and the Lord said, now speak to it. And Moses didn't do that. He thought, well, I hit it the first time that worked, so so he hit it the second time. But God told him to speak to it. And so I'm, I'm seeing all through the Old Testament and New Testament, where these people spoke right. uh, something weird. And, and that's what faith is, Renee. Faith is weird until it works. <laughs> until it works. I mean, when God said to the 500-year-old yes, Noah, God. hey, right. build a boat, it's going to rain. It never had, nobody knew what rain was. It didn't exist. Right. You couldn't find it in the dictionary. You couldn't Google it. I mean, it was like, it's going to rain. It's going to what? It's going to rain. What does that mean? Right. It means water's going to come, you know. And, um, and so Moses looked like a fool. For a hundred years. Noah. Excuse me. I mean, what did I say? Moses? Moses. I'm sorry. Noah. Thank you. Noah sat out there for a hundred years in his driveway building this ark. And so he started when he was 500 years old. He finished it when he was 600 years old. And, and you can just imagine every day his neighbors went to work. They had their lunch pail in their hand. And they go to work and there's their neighbor, old, old brother Noah out there just building on this humongous boat. Wow. Hey, Noah, how you doing today? I'm good, Frank. How you doing? You still building that boat, huh? Yeah, I'm still building it. It's gonna rain, huh? Yeah, it's gonna rain. What's rain? I don't know. <laughs> you know, he looked like a fool. What a scenario! Until it thundered. That's right. <laughs> Until it rained. Until it rained. And, and so faith will make you look that way. Faith, That's right. Faith. That's faith right. is a, is, is believing, acting like God told you the truth when God tells you to do something totally impossible. You know, I've noticed over the years, both in the Bible and in my own life, God doesn't ever tell anybody anything they can do. <laughs> he always tells them something they can't do. Yeah. Because he doesn't want it done by, by your power, by your might. He right. wants you to believe God, believe him, be a diligent, a, be a diligent seeker of him and, uh, and then let him show up. So he tells you to do something impossible. Right. And then you go do it and, and he shows up and it works. Well, and I, th- I think all of that whole faith system, if we could call it that, the entire faith system, even even when it works, even when uh, God asking you to do something that's totally impossible f- 
to you or looks like it's sure it's why sure. you know you, sure. your first question is it, there's no not even a need for it you know and yet like with the little widow woman that only had a little bit of meal a little bit of oil it, it it's really really unique for you to listen to this and realize that God can take a little bit of seemingly nothing to you and multiply it into something that'll bless for, for an extended period of time or a great many other people sure, like he did the fishes and the loaves. But then he'll have you do something that is so bizarre, seemingly, but he sees way on down the road where he's going to have need of Absolutely. what, if he can just find somebody to obey him, sure. if he can just find somebody that will well, obey he's connecting him. connecting the dots. Yeah. And he sees everything from, you know, there's a saying now in, in the corporate world, it says, well, you know, the, the, the corporate board, they see everything from 30,000 feet. Well, God sees it from the very throne room of heaven. He sees how all this is going to... I was preaching gonna, that long before yeah, the corporate board saw it he's, he's all out there seeing it from all different kinds of levels and ways of, of, of how things are going to shake out. And I think it's so important, as you started the program by saying... That, that we go back to the early days yes. and we realize from whence we came and how God brought us through the, the levels of, of natural growth. Like we were growing up, exactly. we were learning. Exactly. And then he taught us so we could be able to do what we're doing now. Well, and, and you and I understand it and appreciate it and love it because we lived it. Right. In other words, when you and Dean, with two little boys, right. were trying to survive and live, yes. when Jackie and I, with two little boys, and then the third baby, then a fourth baby, yeah. were trying to live it and survive, we know it's real because we watched y'all do it. You yeah. watched us do yeah. it. Yeah, no, we did. Y'all knew it wasn't phony. We knew it wasn't phony. Right. And so we early folks <laughs> were the pioneers. Yeah. And the pioneers always take the arrows, you know. They, they're discovering yeah. the new territory, and yeah, the, the indigenous way. folks are they shooting them the first. They left the safety of civilization to head we out. Left, we left the safety of our the denominations. We left the safety unknown. of our own churches. Yeah. Uh, and so we became the pariahs or, or, the, or the outcast, yeah. even to our own families. This is true. Even to our own parents and grandparents People who just loved didn't us understand. dearly, yeah. but they couldn't figure out what in the world's wrong yeah. with these kids. Well, it didn't make any sense to Renee, live by and they got two little babies they got to take care of, and here they're just off out there just... You know, here's Terry and Jackie, and they got these little kids to take care of, and they're just all out there doing God only knows what. You know, Terry drug them off to Mexico. How are they going to eat? How are they going to live? You know. Well, it didn't and, make sense to a denominational thinking or no, even Pentecostal person. Is why? Why are you home reading your Bible when you could go get a job and God would give you money exactly. through your job? Well, and yet that wasn't the point. When the missionaries that we ran into in Oaxaca, when we went to Oaxaca, Mexico. It was just it was just Jackie and I and and, and Lynn. Lynn was yeah. eighteen months old, and right. just the three of us. And I just got now the army, and so we went to Oaxaca. We had we had Jackie and me and a baby mm -hmm. and a Bible and fifty bucks. Right. No no credit cards. No bank account. No money. No house. No, no mailing. No list. mailing <laughs> list. No post office box. No no yeah, organization. Nothing. No yeah, right. no partners. No right. nothing. We just took our Bible and went. Yeah. And uh, what's that? Tell the people that this is so good. What's do you remember that old that old cle uh, poem or or rhyme that says some were called, some yeah, were sent, some, some yeah, just some just got up and went, some just got up and went. And I think that was that was certainly Dean and I, you know, well, we I did, knew we were sent by God, yeah. but we weren't sent by people. No. I had one pastor told me, right. he said, Terry, when you get to Mexico, I'll send you a hundred dollars a month. And he didn't. <laughs> he loved me. and He's a good friend. He just didn't do it, you know. And uh, so when we got down there, there were there were denominational missionaries. Right. Nothing wrong with that, uh, but there were Baptists and Methodists and Presbyterians right. and, and I mean some wonderful, wonderful, precious people. Exactly. And they were sent right. by their organization. Yeah. So they had new cars that the organization <laughs> bought for them. They had nannies for their for their right. kids to school in. They sure. had you know they had money. And that's the way to do it. And that's yeah. great. But right. they would say to Jackie and I, uh, "Who sent you?" Right. Well, I wasn't going to tell them what they wanted to hear. Right. Because what they wanted to hear was nobody sent us. 
Yeah, you, know? you didn't but qualify. I'm not, I'm not going to say that. You didn't look like you qualified. Because I'm not going to cut my own throat with my mouth. Yeah. You know, I'm not going. I'm not going to ruin my faith with my mouth just to make them happy. And so uh, they'd say, "Well, who sent you?" And I said, uh, uh, <clears throat> "God." And they said, "No, no, no. God sent all of us." But who sent you? Uh, God. <laughs> no, but who sent you down here? Well, God sent me down. I mean, there was no other answer. Nobody else sent me except right, God. Right. Well, how much money have you got? Um, uh, God meets all my needs according to rich and glory by Christ. Jesus. No, no, no. How much? How much support do you have? Uh, I, I've got God and heaven and all the promises of God. No, but how much support do you? I mean, it was just a constant badgering. They weren't right. mean. They weren't bad people. Right. But they had money. They did it the right way. They did it the only way they knew to do. And here are these two kids with with a baby doing it all the wrong ways. And, and, and yet, you know, we were. And yet we were. I mean, I'm sure we made mistakes. I mean, I, I know well, sure, we made. We, I, I know we did it the hard way. But yet God met us. Uh, it, it, we could have gone and signed up with somebody else that would well, send yeah. you. We could have gone and signed up under somebody to say, will you send us to Mexico like y'all did? Will you send us to go church plant like we did? And yet. Well, the two or three Bible schools I knew that would have sent us told us God would kill us. Yeah, I and, and that was the same that. thing. Yeah, with us too. Well, God and, loves you, but He'll send you, and you'll just die for Jesus. Yeah, be prepared. You know, <laughs> no to thanks. die. And and I, what what I wanted to say about this uh, in regard to to you know, some were called, some were sent, some just got up and went. Um, the whole idea of us learning the word of faith, as you were talking in the earlier part of the program, was this, Terry was that the Word of God, when we learn what you heard from Kenneth Hagin, and when we learn what we learn from Kenneth Hagin and our, up in Louisiana, it was absolutely, to me... Revolutionary. It, it, was, it was revolutionary, but it was independence to where you did not... Yeah. You were going to learn faith for yourself, and you weren't going to have to be codependent on asking somebody for a meeting exactly or looking right. poor and, and making up, you know, being pitiful so people give you money. Yeah. It left us with our dignity. Right. It left us with a sense of we're not going to have to manipulate to get the blessing of God. It gave it put us back on the the covenant that we had with Absolutely. God. Back on the covenant promises you know, of the word came of God. In our house, if they <clears throat> Excuse me. If they looked in our refrigerator, there's no food. Yeah. If they looked in our cabinet, there's no food. They would have said we were, you know, impoverished, you know, and yet God fed us every meal. I know. I, I mean, mean, that's God just... fed us every meal. I mean, we dug this thing out. We made this thing work. Yeah. Uh, just I on, always just say we gutted raw, it through. Just raw old gut <laughs> faith, you know. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, it he, was hard. It wasn't easy, but we did it. And we found God to be faithful absolutely. and true to his absolutely. word. Absolutely. And, and that was in ignorance and immaturity. We were so, in our so early we, 20s. We, can say this. we had babies. We can say something a lot of people can't say. I watched y'all for 50 years. Yeah. You've watched us for 50 years. Yeah. We know for a fact it works. It works. <laughs> I remember when you had nothing. You remember when we had nothing. Yeah. We, we, you, you watched miracles work in our life. Oh, we watched thank miracles you, Jesus. work in your life. Thank you. Thank you, We know Jesus. it's real. Yes. Nobody can take that away from us. Well, I, you know. Our and, parents didn't like it. Our grandparents didn't like oh, it. Oh, no. They were no. godly people, loved God, you know, been in church all their lives, raised us in church. And they, it's like, what's yeah. wrong with you kids? <laughs> My darling parents did not understand what Dean and I were doing, and they just thought we were so cruel not taking them to the doctor. And I'm telling you, it was a struggle, but I was determined my babies were going to be healed. And, and I okay wasn't going to buy... it's okay if you take buy. your kids to the doctor. That wasn't a doctor with us. That it's wasn't just, it. Yeah. It's just there were, there were some things in faith we were we were having to learn. Well, I had already had them in the doctor, and I had... Terry, you heard working. me say this. I had, My whole refrigerator door, that old nasty refrigerator we had in that apartment... It had three shelves where they had antibiotics the doctors had prescribed for my little boys that were sitting in those shelves that had to be refrigerated. And that was about all there was in that refrigerator. Oh, yeah. We didn't even have the money for for food. And yet God brought groceries. God brought people to the door with groceries. Oh, yeah, absolutely. We didn't have to beg. I mean, supernaturally. Yes. People Brother we Terry, didn't even know. I was at the know. grocery store and the Lord told me to buy you yeah. ribeye steak. Brother Terry, I was at the grocery store and God told yeah. me to buy you groceries. That uh, Methodist woman that had a that was from Germany. Thank God for the Methodists. <laughs> that came to our, found that old 
two-story old garage apartment we were living in for free somebody gave us at the church. And we're up there and that got two little sick boys. And all I got is all this antibiotics I've had to buy to keep them healthy and help fight all the garbage that was going on in their bodies. And here comes this woman up the, up those rickety old stairs saying, is this, is is this the (coughs) Dean Garner residence? Is this where you live? And, and she, in her broken kind of, you know, English and, and, uh, she was a doctor's wife and she had gone to the grocery store at six o'clock that morning and just felt like, I need to buy them groceries. Yeah, I mean, yeah. she was Episcopalian. Yeah. She was Episcopalian and came I to had our two door. Methodist ladies show up at our door. <laughs> and brought brought groceries to us. And I'm telling you, if I had time to tell the whole story, I look at, we had already tried the doctors. Right. We had already done everything they right, told us right, to right, do. Right, right, right. We're in the middle of trying to learn how to lo- use faith. Absolutely. And we were determined to get our babies healed, our boys healed, and get them strong and healthy. And it was a fight. I'm telling you, people, like you're saying, people didn't understand. They no, didn't of course agree. Not. They didn't think. I said, I've given them every kind of medicine I can possibly give and them. They think and it's not then helping. they think you've got a religious spirit. And then yeah. they think you, you think that you know more than they do. And, or you're yeah. trying to be something yeah, you, yeah, that you're not. I said, I just want my babies healed. <laughs> I just want my kids not to so call through the night. So we dug it out, dug it out, yeah. clawed it out, tooth and toenail, yeah. and made it work. I and, want my and husband here to Here we are 50 years God. later. You yeah, know, here we are. Oh, my gosh. What a blessing. What a tremendous testimony it is in my own soul, Terry, to know that we were right, that we did it and we proved God right. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, there, God, there is, God, there's nobody talking us out God of it. God is faithful. <laughs> yeah. There's nobody going to talk us word, out of it because we've been there, done that. We, we prayed through the night. We sought God. We did it anyway. We didn't have any money. We didn't, we had two sick kids. We didn't have any way to do anything. Didn't even have a car. Mm-hmm. And God got us on the mission, got us out in the ministry. Absolutely. I mean, I look at that and, and there, that's what makes me so Militant. <laughs> well, yeah, sure, sure. About it because I you know, thought, I no, 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 own, this is hard fought, folks. You know, I had my own business. I started yeah. out my own business as a teenager. Yeah. I made yeah. lots of money. Yeah. Jackie was a dental technician. She made good money. Yeah. And then we got went in the army, and then as soon as we came out of the army, we took off from Mexico with nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been so easy to go back into business. Oh yeah. It would have been so easy for her to go back oh, into my, dental, yes. dental practice. Yes. But you yes. know, we said no. God's called us to the mission fields. That's what we're going to do. I knew I couldn't work at that job anymore. And I had to come home and take care of my babies and trust God to lead my husband in the ministry where he wanted to go. And God would open doors and feed us at the same time. He could provide a place for us to preach and feed us at the same time. I mean, y'all all the time we were giving and all the time we were paying (laughs) tithes. It wasn't much. It wasn't much. It was. But talk about start where you are. Use what you have. That's why tithing is such a great equalizer. Yeah, no, it is. Because it doesn't matter if you're a multimillionaire or if you're a soccer mom or if you're a homeless person. Yeah. Ten percent is still ten percent. Yeah. So therefore, therefore, you can give the same amount as the millionaire. I mean, it's just, that's the woman, you know, the widow with the two mites, you yeah. know, the with Jesus. I mean, that principle, everything in the word of God is based on a, on a, on a principle and a process that comes from a covenant promise in talk, the word you of God. You couldn't talk me and you out of tithing today or out no. of giving today. There's no way in no, the world. No, because of, because of the goodness. Pull my fingernails of, out and I'd still pay tithes. <laughs> well, we've even got the train choo-chooing for us. Yeah, he's, he's, telling he's us, telling us, amen, go for it. You know, I mean, the, the goodness of God alone promises all of these wonderful things that, you know, we were wanted to talk some about. We'll get to it probably next week about Ephesians 2 that says that once you were out in the world and said you were you weren't just in darkness. You, were, you the, were the darkness. You were the darkness. And it says you were without hope, without promise and without covenants in the kingdom of God. That's a lot and of withouts. I, and I tell you what, Terry, a lot of pe- a lot of Christians are not living off of their covenant. They're That's not right. living off the promises of God. They're like what Brother Hagen used to say, living down uh, barely get a long street down mm-hmm. Grumble Alley yeah, right. <laughs> and right. griping and complaining because you don't have anything. And yet the promises of God here are the richness and the and the grandeur and all of the abundance of the kingdom no, of God. Thank God for his covenant. Thank God. We talk a lot about covenant around here. Yeah. And we'll pick it up again this next week and, and do it again. 
Yeah, because it, it's work. It's, it's what works, and it'll work for you the same. Well, one more time, we're going to tell you, you are more than, more than conquerors. conquerors. Bye-bye. When I first got out of the Army, I went straight to, the, to Mexico, to the mission fields. And uh, I, I spent time with a missionary named Wayne Myers. Wayne's 100 years old this year, still preaching. And I ran into a lifestyle that absolutely pricked my heart, grabbed hold of me. I saw a, a man that was living to give. I mean, he, he, was, he was living his life on planet Earth with the purpose of blessing somebody, lifting somebody, embracing somebody. And I saw that. I said, ah, this is it. I, this is the, I'm, I'm embracing this. And I right there made a vow to God and to myself. And I said, this is how I will live the rest of my life, living to give because it's the very nature of God. So I want to encourage you to hook up with that same lifestyle of giving. I mean, embrace it, living to give. And you can give to your local church. You can give to other ministries. I've partnered with ministries since around the world since I was a teenager. And I tell you, God's blessed me for it. I wouldn't trade it. You can also partner with us. We're always happy to em embrace partners. We pray for them every day. But as long as you hook up with that concept, that lifestyle of God, living to give, then it'll be a blessing to others and it'll certainly be a blessing to you. You know, it's 1968. I'm 18 years old in the jungles of Panama on my very first missionary trip, living with an Indian tribe that didn't wear clothes. And we lived wildcat style, no catch, no eat. If I shot a monkey, we ate monkey. If I shot a pig, we ate pig. Didn't eat anything, didn't shoot anything, didn't eat anything. And I learned a powerful lesson watching these, the, the Indian tribe catch monkeys alive. And when they wanted to eat them, we just, we just shot them and killed them. But uh, when they wanted to go sell them or take them in alive, they would put a, a, a like a, a, a five gallon water jug out in the jungle that they'd brought in from the city. And uh, they'd put bananas in the bottom of it and they'd put them in a local spot where they knew the monkeys were gonna hang out. And then sure enough, here would come monkeys after a while and they'd uh, reach their hand down there and they'd grab a banana. And uh, because they wouldn't let go of it, because they kept the banana in their fist, they couldn't get their hand out of the jar. And so they'd hear us coming, they'd hear the, the tribe wow. coming, they'd smell us coming, they'd hear us coming, they'd start screaming and yelling and hollering and throwing a fit and jumping all over the place, knocking the jug down, dragging it with them. But they'd never open their hand to get loose and gain their freedom. And I learned something about partnership and about giving from that is that uh, you can't receive from God with That's an right. open, with an with a closed fist or a closed heart. That's right. But if you live with an open fist and an open heart, That's you'll right. always be able to be a giver and a receiver. And I've lived by that, Renee, for yes, 53 That's, years that That's I right. refuse to keep a closed fist. I'm gonna let that, I'm gonna open my fist, open my heart, be a blessing partner with, I've partnered with people with ministries all my life and will continue to do so. That's right. We love you, God bless you. There's a link Thank on the you. bottom if you wanna get a hold of us, partner with us, uh, terrymize.com or click on the link. We love you, God bless you. It not only once, I've been shot at a number of times in a number of places around the world, and every time God has miraculously saved my life. This is, this is God's Word. So John, it says not just John talking, it's not just the Holy Ghost yes. talking. God is talking. Eating up the stories that he would tell of his missions and ministry, and it would build my faith.